case, <clears throat> this is an individual, an older gentleman, who had disequilibrium and palatal fasciculations. Soft palate was fluctuating. And you're seeing serial T2 weighted scans from inferiorly to superiorly. The flare scans are demonstrated here, again, from the level of the medulla extending to the middle cerebellar peduncle, and then once again, another shot down towards the dentate nucleus region. These are these axial flare scans. Best diagnosis here. Would you call this Wallerian degeneration, hypertrophic olivary degeneration, cross cerebellar diaschesis, post-traumatic multiple sclerosis, or Lermite Duclos syndrome. Once again, let's have your uh, button boxes available. Best diagnosis here, Wallerian degeneration, hypertrophic olivary degeneration, cross cerebellar diaschesis, post-traumatic multiple sclerosis, or Lermite Duclos. Let's start the timer. <laughs> All right, a little more difficult case in the spectrum of easy to difficult. We started out with the Bell's palsy, which was very easy. Let's see how this case goes. So 38% went with hypertrophic olivary degeneration. That is actually the correct answer, and we should probably discuss this entity. Hypertrophic olivary degeneration is a entity that is associated with the guillaume malaret triangle, which I'll uh, show you in just a second. It is due to a lesion which may affect either the dentate nucleus or the central tegmental tract or the superior cerebellar peduncle or the red nucleus. It occurs approximately three weeks to seven months after the event that has injured those areas. And those areas may be injured by infarction, they may be injured by hematomas, hemorrhagic contusions, etc. And well, the first thing you see is high signal intensity in the medullary olive when T2-weighted scan. And then, after about six months, you see hypertrophy of the medullary olive. And this is due to neuronal hypertrophy and then later on astrocytic hypertrophy. I'm going to try to go backwards here. No, no I'm not. What one see, sees here is the high signal intensity in the medullary olive with enlargement of the olive, which I believe might be better seen over here on the T2-weighted scan. And this is due to injury here of the dentate nucleus. So let's look at the actual triangle. This is called the guillaume malare triangle in which you have connections between red nucleus to the inferior alveoli nucleus and the dentate nucleus. And this is mediated through the ipsilateral central tegmental tract and then across via the contralateral superior cerebellar peduncles or inferior cerebellar peduncles. And an injury to the red nucleus, ipsilateral, may affect and cause hypertrophic olivary degeneration of the inferior olive on that side. An injury to the dentate nucleus will affect the contralateral olive, which is what we are seeing in the previous case. So if you look at this case, the patient has a cavernoma located here. And you look on the flare scans and the T2-weighted scans, and I'm going to ask you this next question. The hypertrophic olivary degeneration is ipsilateral on this case to the lesion because of why? Is it because of transmission is via the ipsilateral central tegmental tract? Is it because transmission is via the ipsilateral superior cerebellar peduncle? Transmission is via the ipsilateral inferior cerebellar peduncle? Or the contralateral dentate nucleus must be involved. Let's start the timer and have you plug in the answers again. Why is this olive hypertrophic and bright ipsilateral to this lesion? And the audience response is very good. So this is due to involvement of the central tegmental tract. And again, I'm going to go backwards to the triangle. This central tegmental tract is involved with that cavernoma leading to ipsilateral inferior alveolar nucleus 
hypertrophic degeneration. Okay, one of the foils that was presented was Wallerian degeneration. I just wanted to show a nice example of this. This is a patient who had an infarction uh, in the middle cerebral artery territory. And as you can see, as we go inferiorly from the uh, frontal lobes, one sees the bright signal intensity extending into the posterior limb of the internal capsule, the ipsilateral cerebral peduncle within the corticospinal tract. It continues down. Note that the corticospinal tract and the ipsilateral cerebral peduncle is small in size. In this case, we're talking about at the midbrain level. It then extends into the pons as this bright signal intensity, again corresponding to the corticospinal tract, medial lemniscus. We see it ipsilateral coming into the medulla, and then note that we see it contralateral as it crosses the pyramidal decussation and then goes extends into the cervical spine on the contralateral side. This is a nice example of Wallerian degeneration of the corticospinal tract coming down and crossing over the pyramidal uh, decussation. The other foil is their meat du clos, and this is a lesion usually of the cerebellar um, hemisphere. It is uh, considered a type of ganglioglioma, if you will, and is one of the other foils that was mentioned. And we move to the next case, which is a patient who had mental status changes. 